pollinators are in trouble. Species are declining. The bee is very upset. This program is about nature's partners, not just plants and pollinators, but people too. We can all be a friend to pollinators. Now, we're about to see a video of students from Stephen F. Austin High School in Houston, Texas, and we're going to see what they're doing to help their pollinators. Let's watch. It's easy to be a friend to pollinators. First, you can create healthy habitat for pollinators. Which habitat would be better for bees, butterflies, and other insects? That's right. Pioneers prefer a garden with fabulous flowers and even fruits and veggies. Gardens can be at schools, homes, parks, and other public places. We're here at the Stephen F. Austin High School Garden in Houston, Texas. This school received a grant from Project Learning Tree during the Monarch Life Program to create a welcoming space for butterflies and other pollinators. The students here have done an amazing job of attracting monarch butterflies and other pollinators by planting native plants and vegetables. They harvest the vegetables, use them at the school, and donate them to local food bank. The students and teachers have created a partnership among pollinators, plants, and people. When you plant a garden, think about these principles to help pollinators. Be native! Pollinators are best adapted to native plants. These are plants that develop, occur naturally, or existed for many years in a specific area. Native pollinators and native plants have adapted to each other through millions of years of partnership. Plant pollinator partners exist right in your area or ecoregion. Avoid modern hybrid plants, which often produce less pollen and nectar. It's important to go native. There are lots of resources on the Pollinator Live website or at garden centers to help you pick native plants for your area. Pesticides and herbicides kill good bugs as well as so-called bad bugs. You can also use beneficial insects like ladybugs in your garden to help keep the bad bugs away. Some people even use certain plants to attract insects they don't want, which helps keep bad bugs away from the plants that are special to you. Be a little messy! Most of our native bee species nest underground, so avoid using heavy mulch and don't worry about being too neat and tidy. Gardens with native plants are usually informal in design, and these gardens are especially attracted to pollinators and people who care about creating healthy habitats. Bee sunny! Pollinators prefer sun, so provide areas with sunny, bare soil that's dry and well drained preferably with south-facing slopes. Be diverse! Plant a diversity of flowering species with abundant pollen and nectar, as well as specific plants for feeding butterfly and moth caterpillars. For example, milkweed is the host plant for monarch butterflies. Monarchs can only lay their eggs on milkweed, and it's the only plant that the caterpillars can eat. Remember that it's very important to plant milkweed or other nectar-producing plants that are native to your area. Select flowers that bloom throughout the growing season. Plant big patches of each plant so that pollinators can forage or find and eat food more easily. Be patient! It takes time for native plants to grow and for pollinators to find your garden especially if you live far from wild lands. Be aware! Check out your surroundings. Observe pioneers when you walk outside. Notice which flowers attract bumblebees or solitary bees and which attract butterflies and other pollinators. Show people your native plant garden and search for pollinators to watch all of the amazing things happening right in your own backyard or schoolyard. While pollinators come in small sizes, they play a large role in our environment and ecosystems. 